So this video is all going to be about Hooke's law and the relationship between the force and the extension of an object. So first of all, what is Hooke's law? So most people immediately jump in and say F equals K X or F equals K E. But that's not what Hooke's law is. So what Hooke stated is that the force from a wire is proportional to the extension of the wire, wire but up to the limit of proportionality, and I'm going to explain what that is. So writing that in equation form, F is proportional to E, where little e is the extension of the wire, which can be written as F equals KE. So this is your constant, and this is often called the stiffness, or it, when it's in terms of a spring, it will sometimes be called the spring constant. And this is actually a property of materials, so materials made of different tight elements, if you like, will have different stiffness constants, but it is a property of each of the different materials. So first thing is oh, we talked about the limit of proportionality. So this is where this force extension graph stops being directly proportional, so I reckon it will be somewhere around here, you can see here. Now with most materials, that is very similar to the elastic limit, so you usually find them in the same region, if not at the exact same space, they'll be at very similar points. And I'm going to explain what the elastic limit is on the next slide. So. The next thing you need to talk about is elastic and plastic deformation. So an elastic deformation is when a material returns to its original shape after being extended. So you have a force on here, and what actually ends up happening is the actual structure itself doesn't change too much. What ends up happening is that under a force you get the particles that make up the material, they get, spa they get more spaced out, but they maintain the same structure, so then when the force is taken off, it goes back to the original structure like this. So there's no actual change in the structural configuration of the particles that make up the material. Plastic deformation, however, what will happen is you'll get a fracture, typically, and what will happen is you'll get a change in the structure. So, whereas these were lined up before, what you get is they'll shift along and you'll get the particles changing, the particles that they're bonded with. So here, you've had a fracture occurring and you'll now have plastic deformation where it will not return to its original shape after it has been extended and subjected to a force. Okay. So those are the two types of deformation. The elastic, the point where you cross over from elastic to plastic is the elastic limit of the material. So let's move on. So a specific example of this are springs. And springs can be subjected to two kinds of forces. A compressive force, so that's a force acting to cause an object to reduce in length or squashing the spring and a tensile force, it's a force acting to cause it, the spring to lengthen, so stretching the spring out. So typically, compressive forces are given a positive sign, and a tensile, by convention, are given a negative sign. So let's have a look at the two different configurations of springs. So springs can be in series, so they're attached end to end like this, or they can be in parallel, so two springs are attached alongside each other to an object. And the same way you deal with resistors, so when you have lots of resistors in a circuit, you try and combine them to form one overall resistance. The same thing, you do the same thing with springs, but the rules are slightly different. So if we say this spring has stiffness constant K1, and this one has stiffness constant K2, what we're looking to do is find out what the equivalent stiffness constant is for the two in series. So unlike in circuits, 
this sort of the opposite. So whereas in parallel it was the one over rule, in springs it's when they are in series you get this one over rule. And as you may suspect, if we label these K1 and K2, this one actually is the simple one. So you're going to get the equivalent over here is K1 plus K2. So like I said, springs are a specific application of Hooke's law, but one that come up quite a bit. So let's have a look at an example question like this. So a specific example of springs in series and parallel. So we've got a system here, we've got a force, and let's put a force in. Let's go with 20 newtons, make it nice. And we've got some springs with stiffness constants that are known, and we want to know what the extension of the overall system is. Is if you're looking at suspension or bridges, that type of thing, you want to know how your structure is going to behave when you apply different forces to it, maybe from the wind or from the road, like falling into potholes, that sort of thing. So what you need to do is break this down to calculate the overall equivalent stiffness constant, and then you can work out what the extension is. So I'm first of all going to try and reduce these two springs here into one, and then I'm going to combine those two with this one here. So just to explain what I'm doing, I'm going to try and calculate the stiffness constant of these two here, and I'm going to call that K4. So K2 and K3 are in parallel, so K4, nice and simple, it's just going to be K2 plus K3 is 10 plus 20 is equal to 30 newtons per meter. So then we want to calculate what our equivalent K is. That's going to be 1 over K1 plus 1 over K4, which is going to be 1 over 5 plus 1 over 30. There are six sets of that, so you get seven thirty, which means your equivalent is thirty divided by seven. So if we want to calculate what our extension is, so our e, if f equals k e, so e must equal f over k, which is equal to 20 divided by 37, which is going to be 140 divided by 30, which is equal to around, let's see what, let's see that, 4.7 meters. Now you might be thinking that's a horrifically long extension for springs. I've never seen one extend that far. And you're right. So typically, if we have a look at these Ks up here, they wouldn't be like this. Normally, they're in the origin of 5 kilonewtons per meter and that sort of thing, but I just picked nice simple ones for this example. But typically, you wouldn't be expecting anything like this. You'd be thinking a few millimeters, maybe a couple of centimeters at the peak of this. But... As you can see, in this case, we've ended up with around 4.7. If you actually calculate it, you get 4.6666666. But I've rounded it to two sig figs for this question.